Hello, YouTube friends. <clears throat> when I was down in the treehouse the other day, um, having that midsummer nap, <laughs> I saw this cushion again, and I remembered that I had made these cushions some time ago. And I thought they're a really nice shape, a bit of a quirky, unusual shape. Uh, they're also, uh, you know, they're good to sort of snuggle into your side if you want to, uh, you know, some support in your back. And so I thought I would show you how I made this. Now, I made this one just by stitching up the edge here. And I'm going to try today. I don't know why, because I'm not very good with zips, but I'm going to try playing with zips today. I'm not really um, concentrated on learning about zips, but I am going to put a zip in this co cushion cover and oh, hello. And then we are going to alter the cushion pad so that it fits this funky shape. So the things you need for this uh, little project are a cushion pad uh, and then whatever size that is, we're going to make the cover appropriately. Now, the one I'm using today is a 12 inch cushion pad. Uh, this one is just made of foam chip chips and it was really easy to do. But the one I've got, the only one I've got to use today is filled with feathers so I think when we get to that bit that's going to be quite interesting but for now though uh, in order to now I'm not offering this as a like a mega tutorial I'm just showing you the steps I'm sure there are hundreds of people watching who are better at zips than I am and I mean hundreds thousands possibly I think you're probably better at zips than I am come say hello all right, sit, sit on the on the fabric over there then. I've got some upholstery weight fabric. This is the same stuff that my curtains are made from through the sitting room. So I did think that that might be nice to make one that matches the sitting room. And of course now Norm is sitting on them all. I've got some of this, which uh, was curtains, and I've made loads of things out of this over the years. It's nice. But I've also got this, which Norm is sitting on. So I'll show you the piece that I've already cut out those there. I've got this which is a nice uh, purpley thing won't show the dirt too much but because it's going to have a zip on you will be able to take it off and wash it. Okay so zips then the first thing I'm going to tackle then is putting a zip in and um, I've got some short ones I've got someone who doesn't like <laughs> putting in zips I seem to have rather a lot of them <laughs> and but I've got these ones here and I'm going to choose the right colour to go with this fabric. And um, it's either going to be this purple or this grey. What do you think? Is there a darker grey? Nope, same colour. OK. So those, those are my choices. Or black. No. Those are my choices then. So I'm going to decide... Uh, which one to put in. My cushion pad's 12 inches square, so I've cut my cushion pieces 13 inches square, which is a little bit, it'll give me half an inch seam allowance if I need it. And I've also cut two pieces of a cotton, which is uh, just an ordinary uh, cotton weight for the lining, which will help put the zip in. Okay. So I'm going to take you over to the sewing machine now and you're going to see me attempt to put a zip in. <laughs> and you can shout at the screen. That's fine. I don't mind at all. No, Kate, don't do it like that. It's a much easier way. <laughs> but we'll, we'll pop over to the sewing machine now and we'll do that. Now, before we go any further, I'll just tell you that I'm taking most of my zip knowledge from a fantastic tutorial on the Missouri Star Quilt Company, where she shows you how to make a little zipper pouch. The same um, things that you'll be doing there, I'm going to be doing here. So it's, there's nothing new under the sun, is there? And Jenny has already invented it all. OK, then, so let's put my tea, put my tea down there. So as well as the two lots of 14 inches, no, 13 inches, as well as the two lots of 13 inch pieces, 
outside cover, inside cover. I've cut two pieces from the, from the waste fabric in the outside cover that are two inches square. And I'm just folding them in like this, fold it in, fold it in. I don't think you need to fold in the, the, the raw edge because you're going to be uh, sewing over that anyway. And two inches might be a tiny bit too big, but I'm folding them in like that and like that. And I'm going to sew along there and along there. So I'll quickly do that now. Fold in, fold in, so that then that measurement is about, oh, I don't know, it's just over half an inch, isn't it? So what you've got then is two little sort of, these are the pieces that sort of hide the zip at the end. You can keep those to one side. Kind of doing this in real time so it's a little bit uh a little bit scary we just take one of our outside pieces and one of our lining pieces and this is where i can sometimes i'm going to say you but me i can get into a bit of a muddle and the first time i did one of these uh, zipper pouches from jenny uh all my, my zip was on the inside <laughs> so you want your outside fabric to have the zip pull. Just a minute. Your outside fabric to have the zip pull. So it, it wants to be like that. Let's do it from this end. It wants to be like that. Quite a bit of editing, I think, this video is going to need. So it wants to be like that with the zip pull on the outside. So that means that that needs to be like so. Now, before I do that, though, I need to I need to put these two pieces. I need to sew them onto the end here. So why didn't I sew them onto the end when I did the over sewing? What a twit. Got a double row of sewing now. Okay, never mind. I have got a double row of sewing. It's going to have to do. What's absolutely marvellous about this sewing machine, <laughs> and I've done it on the wrong side. Okay. <laughs> Am I going to leave all these glitches in? I guess so. Because I make glitches all the time. I'm just going to pull that off. And I'm going to put it on. Okay. There. So what you need to do first of all then. <laughs> oh dear. Is stitch this. Across the end of your zip. I think. You may never see this video. You don't want to look at me, do you? You want to look at what I'm doing down here. I've opened it up ever so slightly. I'm going to put the end there. It's like a stop for it, like that. Something like that. So if you're going to do this, don't bother stitching it down first. And I'll tell you what's marvellous about having a machine like this is that I don't have to worry too much about it sewing over the nylon bit of the zip. So now that's doing that and that's stopping it at each end with a little stop like so. Let's see if that works. Next thing, we need to get the zip and the lining. And this is the lining is what holds the zip in place and makes everything neat. 
on the inside. So I'll just angle you down again. OK, so I've got my zip like that. I'm going to open it a little bit, actually, and I'm going to put the zip there and there. Now, sometimes I find that when I'm stitching the zip in, it slips a little bit. So either use loads and loads of pins. Or what I found really helpful is loads of binding clips. But because I'm doing another project at the moment, all my binding clips are in use. So I haven't got any spare ones, which is a, a nuisance. I mean, all of them, like a hundred binding clips are all in use on a different project, which I can't talk about. <laughs> now, so in that case, I'm going to do loads of pins. Like a lot of pins. OK, so I've got to, with the zip open, I'm just going to do lots of pins all the way along. And I'm lining up the edge of the zip with the right sides together of these two fabrics. And I'm pinning across the zip. I'm not telling you how to do this. I'm making this up as I go along. OK. Now. This, um, of course, there are zipper foots, aren't there, on uh, zipper feet, zipper foots <laughs> on ordinary sewing machines. I guess this um, Juki may probably have a zipper foot. And if I was ever going to get into playing around with lots of zips, then I may invest in one. But, you know, I'm already getting sweaty palms doing this. So I think I think me and zips are not good friends. All right. So I've got lots of pins all the way along there now. Got another one in there. Because it doesn't matter how many you put in, does it? If it's going to hold the thing in place. Let's try sewing it. It's a, quite an adventure this, isn't it? OK. So as near as I can be, the nearest I can get to the zipper teeth is the width of this foot here. People who know how to put zips in, who've got zipper, uh, a zipper foot, they're doing a much, much better job than me. But what we're making, we're making a kid's cushion. Let's remember, we're making a kid's cushion and not... Um, some sort of fancy ball gown. OK, now I can feel my zip there now, my zip head. And so what I'm going to do now, and I have tried doing this with the with the foot down and it doesn't like it. So I'm going to do it with the foot up and then just go right back to where I was. Um, I was before and I'm going to get the take that one out. I'm going to get the zipper head thing and zip it past where I was so that I'm not going to have a bump when I go past the zip because it was it was there and this would have gone veering round it to get past it. Now I can feel the teeth of the zip there. Oh, and I've unthreaded my machine by doing that. OK, bear with me, guys. I'll be right back. I didn't see that I'd done that. My old machine had a needle threader, which was marvellous. And someone in the comments suggested that I buy this needle threader. I can't make it work. So instead, I use this needle threader, which is perfect. Except it does need me to have my glasses on. And there we go. In it goes. I definitely couldn't thread this needle without it, though. OK. In you go, and grey thread, grey needle threader, grey everything. Nope, nope. Lots of editing, I think. There we go. And we'll pull that through, and that just sits up there for when I need it next. Lovely.
Okay. There we are, we're back on track. And I can feel where the teeth are, and I can see that. And so it should be just about right. Now, if you're, if you're worried about the zip slipping, tack it, tack it in place. Yeah, clips would have been brilliant. Somebody in the comments asked what this little piece of um, fabric is that I use to stitch off on the end. What's its purpose? And its purpose is so that um, I don't have to pull thread out. I don't have long tails of thread and they're all caught up in this little thread catcher. It just makes sewing easier, neater. And then you end up with all these cool little <laughs> bits of art. <laughs> And it just slips off like that. And I save it for the next time I need it over here. Okay, let's see if um, how well that worked. So the zips on the proper side, like that. It's pretty straight and neat. I'm happy with that. And the lining as well. Yeah, it's pretty straight and neat. So now we need to pin the other side in exactly the same way, not the wrong way round. You can tell I've done that once, can't you? Okay, here's the next two pieces. Let's just have you over there so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Okay. Are we going to help? No. So we'll just have a break for a word from our sponsor. Hello, <laughs> Norma. And a cup of tea. So I'm sure there are expert tutorials all over YouTube. I'm not that person. I like doing things. I like having an experiment. I like trying to see if um, if I can make something work. I do find it's useful to look at a website like uh, a, a YouTube, like uh, Missouri Star Quilt Company. I've got some really, really great tutorials. So we can't hesitate any long any longer, Norma. We have to get you off the piece of work. And so the second side. Why would you move her though? She's so contented. So this cat's 20 this year. She's in pretty good nick. I get her some really special food, which means that the other two get really special food as well. That's all right though. Everyone looks great. I think your food probably costs more than mine. I'm going to have to move you, though, because I want to get on and put the second part of this zip in. Ages and ages ago, I made some beads. I'll leave a link to the beads. And someone said they were pink and green. <laughs> and someone said, why don't you make some the same colours as Agnes's quilt? So I did. And I was getting dressed this morning and I thought, oh. I haven't worn those for a while, so put them on. And now she started purring, which makes it harder to move her. Look, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll move that baby iron out of there. And I'll put you in there. Some nice soft fabric in there. How's that? What do you think of that? It's quick before she gets comes back again. Okay then, so we've got our first piece beautifully done and now we need to do the second piece 
and not get it wrong. I'll angle you down. I don't think, why should I get it wrong? There's no reason I should get it wrong. So this one then goes right sides down. Do it that way so you can see. Towards the zip, like that. Uh, no, Toward, yes, towards, yes, towards the zip, like that. And then this one goes right sides towards it here. And I do all the pinning and, and placing and all the cleverness again. Okay, so place that one there like so, the lining like that, and then we bring in the pins. And I can feel the zip right under my fingers. Has anybody been watching um, The Great British Sewing Bee? which just finished recently, and I thought the right person won. Although I did like the guy, Raph, I thought he was lovely. Has some really good ideas. And they do these sewing challenges. And uh, Joe Lysett's there bouncing up and down, being, uh, being funny. And then he says, sewers, you have 10 minutes left. And that's when they decide to put in an invisible zip. What? These people are more practiced than I am. Now, I'm going to um, just double check that that's correct. Looks pretty good to me. And I'm going to open the zip. Where's it gone? Oh, no, I can't because I've just pinned it in place. OK, I'll open it when I get to it. OK. I think I'd like the transformation challenges on that programme. You know, when they give them um, a parachute or when they give them um, a load of blankets or bling and they've got to make a something or other. Those would be the things that I'd enjoy. I wouldn't like the pattern challenge because that's, you know, the invisible zip in 10 minutes. And I don't know whether I'd like the made to measure. Mm. I would do. Maybe I'd make a quilt out of the pattern challenge, out of the um, out of the, 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 you know, the fun one, the whatever it's called, the inspiration one. I think I'd just get all the pieces and make a patchwork quilt <laughs> in, in 40 minutes. <laughs> anyway, I'm just putting off the inevitable moment when I have to sew this zip in. <laughs> Let's do it. OK, is your heart in your mouth? Mine is. There it is. OK. Make sure everything's lined up. OK. It is slipping a little. It's a cushion for a child. Don't even worry about it, Kate. That's OK. It's just this bit that's slipping. Now, I've got the zip here. So what I'm going to do is unzip it and lift the foot up. Put the foot back down again. A little, like a quarter of an inch behind where I was. Make sure everything's lined up. There we go. Whew. Okay, let's see. So I've got my, I mean, that grey doesn't look too good, does it? It's going to have to do. The purple look worse. I've got my two lining pieces. I've got my two outside pieces. And now I'm going to make the funky triangular shape. And the way that you do that, and if you only remember one thing, undo the zip. That is really, really important to undo the zip. So what I'm going to do now then is take both the outer parts and get them right sides together. And line up where this zip comes here 
and I'm just going to actually I'm going to put a pin in there I'm just going to fold those together so that they line up perfectly put a pin in there lots of layers there but that's why this machine's so great I think I might have said that once or twice hi Norma my constant companion isn't she and then on the other side the same I'm going to fold the zip in half so that that little keeping thing that I did is the bit that I'm going to sew really close to. Yeah, perfect. And now remember the only important thing you need to know, keep the zip open. It's going to be vital for later when we're turning this the right way round. Okay then, so remember I cut it 13 inches and I need it 12. That's so I can give myself a half inch. Uh, so I'm not going to do my quarter inch. I'm going to do a half inch seam now. And when I get to this bit here, I'm not going to worry because I have good machine. Oh, it didn't even notice it. an inch all the way around I'm going to do one long side and I'm going to do the other long side don't go round the top because we're going to do something fancy with the top Okay, so far it's just like any other cushion cover, but now instead of sewing along the bottom, we're going to open this out and line up these two seams. And because I like nesting seams, I'm just going to make one go one way and one go the other. That actually doesn't matter, but just to distribute the, the bulk there. I'm a fan of nesting seams. I'm going to put a little pin in there and then pull that either side. Now you can pin all the way if you like, but I think that's going to be fine. I'm just going to hold that and do my half inch seam here. Now, if this was a single cushion cover, I might uh, use a zigzag stitch or an overlocker on that, but it's going to be lined, so it's all right. And now we get the, the lining, and we're going to do the same thing, open it out, and line these two seams together, front and back, there. I will pin that, but, we do have to leave a, a, a gap there big enough to get your hand in for turning it the right way around. So now I'm a half inch. So I'm going to leave a gap of oh, four inches maybe. And because I'm going to get my hand in and do some manhandling, I'm going to go backwards and forwards. And then make sure my needle's up. There we go. Let's do it all the way around. Oh, silly. There's a few things I miss on this machine. My old machine, which I still would use from time to time, but it has a needle up position, so it stops in the needle up position. Whereas with this one, I've got to make it do it. I mean... What hardship is that, eh? <laughs> and now I'm going to just needle up. Another thing that was uh, a worry, uh, a worry, uh, something that I was concerned about with this machine was that I couldn't reach the knee pedal to lift the foot with my knee because I'm so short. 
but I've now got a different sort of chair. It's an office type chair and um, it makes me a bit higher up. So my knees in the right place. OK. The moment of truth. So you don't need that pin in there. The moment of truth. I'm going to turn this the right way round now. And this is when all of you who've forgotten to leave your zip open are all now having to unpick one of the seams. See, I haven't made that quite big enough. There we go. And I'm going to go down. Oh, I've got a hand cramp. I'm going to go down to the bottom. And because I'm I'm not going to be able to do it later i'm going to pinch that seam in and press it really so that i'm pressing that corner out now while i've got the chance there we go i'm going to do the same with this one i could clip the edge off there should i no my hands in here now i can't do it <laughs> okay and then we just get hold of that and pull it through and on by the same token i'm going to do exactly the same thing here where I'm going to just poke that end out there like that and then because you're not going to see this ever the inside at the bottom what I'm going to do with that now is just pull it like that and tuck those edges in like so and then just I'm going to machine stitch along the top of there just for those four inches that I left open. Ba ba ba, on the other side. Now the moment of truth. I'm going to push the lining inside the cushion. When you need glasses for close work, but you don't need them for distance, they're on and off all the time, which is why they're often here. And I have got very focals. Can't get away with them. Don't like them at all. OK, so push those edges into there like that. And now we're going to work out to see how well or badly our cushion zip worked out. It's not the best cushion zip in the world. What happened there? It's not bad. That one's a better. That one's better. I'll show you that end because that one's a bit better. Look, that's kind of neatened it off. I think at this end I just caught it too. I caught it too near. But hey ho, it's all good. Like I say about most of my things, it won't win prizes. And so the zip zips up like so. And all we need to do now is make the cushion pad the same size to fit this. And if you thought that was tricky, you ain't seen nothing yet. Now we get to the point where we have to consider the cushion pad. So we've made our triangular cushion for our uh, cover, but our cushion pad is like this. So do this when you're not going to get distracted or have anything else to do because what we're going to do is on the because this is stitched up along here in order for it to get the label put in and it's just a single line of stitching so we're going to get the filling as far down as we can I have lots of pins on hand <laughs> and then I'm going to unpick the stitches along the sewn up end. Now, of course, that means that whatever's in the stuffing inside your, your pillow, and this one is a uh, duck feather. Now, we don't want to end up with a load of duck feathers all over the, all over the house. It's not a good idea. So that's why I say do this when you, you've got a little bit of time and you're not going to be called away or have to leave the job half finished. 
So we're going to just, I can see the feathers now. It's really well sewn up, which is a good thing for the cushion, but it's not, it's a bad thing for us because it's going to take some patience to unpick this. Oh, there we go. That's good. Now, <laughs> no feathers on the outside. <laughs> and pick it all the way to the end, which is probably reinforced. So we'll take some careful ripping. First feather out. Not good. Yeah, so the end is reinforced. Nicely made cushion, wherever I got this from. But not for our purposes. I'm just going to carefully undo all their good work. There we go. I started in the middle, so I've got the other side to do as well. <laughs> oh, five feathers, six feathers, six feathers. I can pop those back inside again. Just be careful. Have a real care doing this. And you have to take it right to the end because of what we're going to do next. You think I'm crazy, Norma? as well so long as i get some nice food at the end of it i'll be fine yes oops a daisy seven eight nine feathers just push them back in again do it gently carefully <laughs> And as soon as you've got the end completely open, well, I guess I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pin that back together while I do the other half. Yeah, that makes perfect sense, doesn't it? It does, Nor. It makes perfect sense. And then as I started in the middle, I'm just going to go the other way. I started in the middle so that I could get my unpicker underneath the label. I'll do the other half now. Well, it could be some time. You don't need to put the label back on again. If this is for you, I mean, if you're going to give it away, then maybe whoever's going to receive it might like to see the label, but I'm not going to bother putting the label back on. And a good stitch ripper uh, will make this job easier. Nearly there. Don't breathe. Oh, and of course they've reinforced this end as well. <laughs> so I'm just going to pin those back together again. Oh, this is heart in your mouth stuff, this. But it is worth it for a nice funky pillow for a, a child's bedroom or uh, there's another couple of things you can do with them as well. Another feather. <laughs> okay, and I'm just going to do the reinforced end now where they've gone backwards and forwards a couple of times, which I'll do as well. Do you know, I've just thought of a way you could do this. If you were to push as many feathers down into the bottom of the cushion as possible, although this is actually really well stuffed, and then just pin a couple of inches below, you would have far fewer feathers to contend with. Just thought of that now. I'm not going to make another one of these, so but if I do... I'll use that technique. OK, now I'm nearly there. <laughs> I have to get this right the way to the end. 
like so. So look here. I've just got a few feathers on the table. Not many. And I'm going to poke those back inside. Or not. Leave those there. Now, what we're going to do now then is repin it so that it'll be triangular. Okay. So, heart in my mouth. I'm going to open the whole thing up like that. I'm going to shove everything back inside again. Maybe using a pillow, a cushion pad that's made with um, man-made stuffing. That would have been a darn sight easier, wouldn't it? But this is the one I had. Okay, so I'm going to get what was the ends of the cushion and bring them together and pin them together. I'm going to use a lot of pins. I'm going to pin that one together there. Like that. Yeah, definitely using um, a cushion that's not filled with feathers. Oh, we all like a challenge, don't we? So when the middle's pinned and the middle is just the two outer edges here, then I'm going to, you can see, you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to pull on these two edges here, just keeping the turn in that the original pillow maker made. And then I'm going to pin this together with a lot of pins. Or these would work. These little clips, they would be a good idea. What a mess. Yeah, if they don't want to stay in, take them out. And what have I got? 20 feathers that don't want to be in there? Okay, lots of pins. All the way along. At this point, if you wanted to put the label back in, now would be the time to do that. For the care instructions, if you wanted to do that. Yeah, binding clips, that would have been a much better way of doing it. Now, with as many pins in there as, as is going to hold it together, I'm going to get it under the machine now and sew it back together. I'm going to have a go anyway. Okay. Probably worth repinning it with the pins on the outside, like there. Make sure you're getting both sides in. But it doesn't take a moment. it's done. So when you're sure it is done, there's one little one that wants to come out and another one there, then you can plump it back into shape again. And there you have a feather filled triangular cushion pad, which was tricky, but not impossible. So now we'll try it in our cushion cover, shall we? So all that remains then is to put the cushion pad into the triangular cushion. Now it's a little bit tricky because it, it to get it in, but once it's in, it's in. So it, it needs to be in that way. So 
those two edges need to go in first, like so. And because I made it, it's a 12 inch cushion, and because I made the uh, cushion cover using 13 inches of fabric, it means it's gonna be nice and, and um, plump. And not, I don't like loose cushion covers very much. This one's not going to be that way. And so just before we zip it up, we'll just make sure that the, it's right into the edges and to the corners here. There we go. And there it is. A really weird, funky triangular cushion. This is really helpful. Now, obviously I'm using my phone to film with, so I can't show you what you could do with it. But uh, let's just see what have I got that would look like a phone. Here we go. One of my Sizzix die cutter things. So you can prop something up, a book or your iPad or your phone or whatever, and it holds it absolutely beautifully. I think that's one of its nice functions. But it's also just a, a nice cosy cushion in a weird shape. Now, And do you think you might have a try at making those? I'm going to make hundreds of them in virtual pink and send them all down the lime green sofa for you. Let me know with the hashtag on Instagram, LHHLGS. I'll leave that in the description below. And if you make these, make them with, you know, patchwork or whatever you like, really. And if you make them and if you manage the zip, <laughs> let me know over there on Instagram. Leave us a comment below. Give us a thumbs up and a like and a share and subscribe because that really does help the channel to grow. Thanks so much for tagging along with me today while I made this cushion. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.